Welcome to The Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Russell Knudsen. This is Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash. And welcome to episode 81 of The Hair Loss Show. I'm very pleased to be back uh, filming with uh, Vikram. We've had a COVID lockdown that's uh, kept us apart for some months. So it's our first chance to talk to you again as the dynamic duo. <laughs> so today we thought we'd talk to you about cell therapy. It's a topic that we get asked about a lot um, and there's a lot of confusing terminology out there. So I'm gonna try and explain some of the strategies that people are working on at the moment and what that promises for in the future. The first thing I want to tell you is that cloning does not exist despite whatever you hear in the media. There is no cloning therapy available yet, um, but there are a lot of people who use confusing terminology when what they really mean is that they're trying to stimulate stem cells rather than replicate stem cells. So I want to walk us through that sure. today and talk to us about it a little bit. So the strategy of cell therapy is not likely to be, at least initially, and we've discussed this previously, creation of new, brand new hair follicles that are, are actually injected or planted into a bald area. Uh, that doesn't exist. The human experiments so far have been quite disappointing compared to the animal experiments. So that's uh, still a midway off in the future and likely to be an extremely expensive process. All they're getting at the moment is unusual hairs and kind of like fur balls. You know, it doesn't really line up like normal hair does. So if that's not going to be the first thing that's going to help us with cell therapy, which is really talking about stem cell therapies uh, for balding hairs, and we're primarily talking about balding, but it could also be aging, for example, is to understand what we're trying to do. So let's start with young, healthy people. Young, healthy people have healthy hairs. And in those healthy hairs, they have stem cells at two parts of the hair follicle, right? They have down here in the dermal papilla, the DP cells, and they also have bulge cells up here. And the bulge cells communicate with the dermal papilla cells to make, cells to make them grow. So the, what we understand now is that as the hair shrinks and becomes a smaller hair, so does the number of DP cells shrink. So if you have 100% to start with, it starts to decline as you get smaller and smaller. And what we've shown both in animal studies and in human studies is that when you, when you get to less than 50% of the original number of cell, stem cells that you had, then no longer are you able to make a healthy hair. So this explains why, for example, uh, all our medical therapies work better in the areas that aren't very sure. thin because the hairs have not yet reached that critical endpoint of 50% loss of stem cells. So instead of creating new hairs, another way of looking at the promise of stem cell is to supplement the number of stem cells we have in these miniaturized hairs to see if we can make them grow back to being a healthy hair. So this is where you might be able to use dermal papilla stem cells uh, to help these earlier thinning hairs. Now, just to be absolutely clear, I'm not talking about using stem cells in shiny bald areas. Those hairs are done and dusted. There's no way to turn them into a healthy hair again. And that's important because we can't, you know, the, the whole goal of stem cells or hair, you know, or cloning in the, in the strictest sense, or in the sense that it's predominantly, um, you know, apparent in, uh, in the media is that if you get one hair, oh, look, we can grow it into 10,000 new hairs that we can't we can't right. do that would be that's either creating new hairs or what some people are calling hair multiplication and I'd be very wary about these claims they don't exist in the real world they're talking about something different that they're just putting a fancy name on so this is a credible pathway back to a healthy hair if it hasn't reached that critical 50 percent loss of stem cells so I'm involved, or, and our clinics are involved, with a number of doctors around the world in a research project coming out of the UK with a company called Hair Clone. H-A-I-R Clone. 
And so this is adopting the strategy that we take some healthy hairs from the back here. The stem cells in these hairs are balding resistant stem cells for another way of putting it, uh, which is why they are able to be transplanted mm -hmm. and, and stay healthy, even in bald areas. They are balding resistant stem cells. So we take 100 plus individual hairs from this area and we take them to the laboratory, which is in the UK at the, the, the moment, and we expand them. And the stem cells that we've got from these 100 follicles, we expand out to something like 10 million cells, if you like. And the idea behind that then is that we'll have four or five syringes worth of material then to inject back into the scalp of patients with early thinning so that we can supplement adding, adding dermal papilla stem cells to these dermal papilla stem cells in this miniaturized hair and drive that hair back to being a healthier hair. Now it's early stages, but we're not sure yet how long the effect would last, say from a first injection. It might be something that would last two or three years. It might last longer. It may require multiple injections, but the goal eventually is to kind of overwhelm these dermal papilla cells with these new dermal papilla cells so that we could potentially convert a balding hair into a non-balding hair. And that might take multiple injections for that to happen. But that's the promise. So, the, so let me ask this. So the, the, the difference there, because this looks almost like stimulation therapy, because you're stimulating that miniaturized hair to, you know, revert back to its uh, you know, thicker self. Now, other stimulation therapies, such as minoxidil or low-level la uh, laser therapy, are, are different in that they are trying to stimulate the existing um, hair, but the underlying mechanism of why you know, the hair is miniaturizing in the first place is still being left unchecked. And there's no change to the stem cell population. Correct. Whereas this is actually trying to actually change the fundamental... So we're augmenting Correct. the hair rather than stimulating the hair. Yes. That's the difference. We're augmenting stem cells to the hair rather than stimulating hair. So I don't want to overstate this, but the proof of concept exists that we can do this. And what Hair Clone has managed to do now is to create the first hair bank in the world, which is in the UK. So we can send follicles from anywhere in the world to the UK to be put into cryo storage. Uh, after the hair stem cells have been expanded. And then initially what's going to have to happen for patients who want to uh, try this uh, uh, exciting uh, developing therapy is they'd have to fly to the UK to have uh, the surgery. Mm -hmm. Now that's a challenge at the best of times, certainly a challenge in these COVID restricted times. But the reason I'm mentioning it is there's so much um, publicity about stem cells, there's so much publicity about cloning out there. I want to talk about what's credible versus what is, uh, other people are talking about, which may be something completely different. So this is a research project that Vikram and I are going to be involved in and also a therapy that we're going to be involved in. But we are going to do it very carefully with all of the proper controls in place. And just to remind all of the people listening out there, it's you using your own tissue. So we're not going to create problems uh, of immune reactions to these things. This has been very well tested in humans as well as in the animal studies. So we believe this is a safe therapy and it shows considerable degree of promise. I'm not going to talk in any greater detail about it today because we've only just started banking. There's about 20 patients so far in the world who've sent uh, their tissue to the UK for banking, but it has begun. It's the start of a new era of potential therapy. If you want to know more about it, you go to their website, which is hairclone.me. All right, and you'll find all of the information you need about where we're going with this therapy. So just be wary about people's terminology when they're mm. talking about things. Cloning does not exist. Hair model location does not exist. But certainly if people are talking about expanding stem cell lines with the idea of supplementing existing stem cells in the hair follicles in the hope of turning them into a non-balding hair, that looks like a future therapy. For our so let's sort of, I mean, I know we're not going to sort of talk in great detail about it, but who is the kind of patient 
that we're going to go look, you know, this will be a useful therapy on. Okay, so it can be a standalone. Who's, the, who's, the, who's not the who's, right patient? Okay, who's not the this right could patient. be a standalone therapy for younger patients with early thinning or even older patients with early thinning. And what I mean by early thinning is hairs that are potentially able to be uh, improved. They must be not super miniaturized. So it can be used as a standalone therapy in these patients. It can use, be used in patients who are also having transplants. So for example, what we often find, particularly here, is that you've got a, the center of the, the crown or the vertex balding area with a shiny ball. Well, that's not where this therapy is gonna work. You could transplant hair into that. But at the margin where the hairs are just beginning to thin, then we could use stem cell uh, augmentation, use this hair cloning technique to actually strengthen up the margin. It doesn't necessarily replace drug therapy because drug therapy is preventing future loss. This is treating existing loss. So it may still be all part of the mix of things that we do going forward. But ideally, the patients we want are earlier thinning patients and younger patients who've got the healthiest stem cells because we think that's going to have the most promise in the future. So if you're someone that's lost a lot of hair, this is probably not the, the therapy. I mean, in terms of what the expectations and what the outcome is going to be, it is not going to make you grow new hair or, or, or sort of uh, give you a larger number of hairs that you can use in the transplantation process. No, that's right. So we, you know, we still end up with the same number of hairs. Remember, this is not expanding the number of hairs. We're expanding stem cells to augment lost stem cells in miniaturized hairs. So I hope this has helped clarify some of the issues. As I said, the information is available on the website. We'll put a link uh, down below down as well. Down below as well. Um, and we will be starting banking here in Australia shortly. Uh, we already have started banking in the UK and we've already started banking in the US. So um, there is, you can find more information about it on the internet and uh, hopefully some people out there will see this as an insurance policy for the future mm -hmm. and be prepared to put their hair into the banking. Um, the therapy uh, for, is probably two years away before we do, start doing the big clinical trials. So let's just put this in context. We're not recruiting patients at the moment uh, into a trial, but we're prepared to recruit tissue uh, for banking purposes as, as we work our way through the next stage of the process. I hope you found that somewhat that good. interesting because it's, we get asked about this a lot. Um, I'm not making too much uh, uh, about it to say it's showing great promise. But I think this is, I mean, this is probably where we're going to next, isn't it? Regenerative therapies are the sort of next frontier in terms of uh, hair, or certainly another, you know, arrow in the quill, so to speak, along with medical therapy and, you know, other... Uh, with the promise that you get long-standing effects from it, which is yes. really what we're trying to achieve. So I hope this has been helpful, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. All right, take care. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.